So percent increase and decrease. It's basically the same kind of stuff that we've been doing the past like two weeks, except it just has a little bit different formula. So instead of part over whole equals percent over 100, we're just going to follow this. So the first example, in blue I have the per, uh, an example of percent increase, and then in the green I have a percent decrease example. So we'll do a couple together, and then I'll have you guys just start kind of going on your own, because I think this is pretty simple. So the first one, when you guys go ahead and write this down as an example, and just put 25 to 32, you don't have to write the whole thing. So first example, if you go from the number 25 to the number 32, I want to know what percent increase is that. So we're going to follow this formula down here. We need to know the amount of increase, so how much did it go up, over the original amount. So we're starting at 25, so that's our original amount. And then our amount of increase, well, you can easily see this one, but it, when the numbers get a little bit bigger, all you do is subtract. So we need to take 32 minus 25, and we get 7. So our amount of increase is 7. It went up by 7 numbers. Question so far? When we have this written as a fraction, all you have to do is divide. 7 divided by 25. Numerator goes inside the box, denominator goes outside, and then just divide. It's going to turn it into a decimal, okay? And so down here, if you need to write this in your notes, go for it. Um, you could just probably memorize this. But if I want to know what percent increase it is, I need to change my decimal to a percent, okay? Also, a quick tip. If you can simplify your fraction, so divide them both by 3 or 2, It'll make your division a little bit easier, um, but they're still equivalent, so you'll still get the same answer. You don't have to do that, uh, but if you choose to simplify first, it might make your life a little bit easier as far as the division goes. Okay, so we can't simplify this one, so we're just going to divide. And I tell all my other classes to always start with two zeros, a decimal and two zeros. It'll always get you started. It might not be enough, but it'll at least get you started. 25 can't go into 7, so we need to turn it into a decimal. Decimal straight up. Make sure you're doing this with me. How many times does 25 go into 70? Twice. 2 times 25 is 50. Subtract. We get 20. Bring down that other 0 that I added. How many times does 25 go into 200? 8. Okay, 25 is the easy one because you can think about money. So how many quarters go into $2? Eight. Okay, so in this case, a decimal and two zeros was perfect. Um, we're done here, but if you need to add more zeros, go ahead and add more. Go ahead and just go to the tenths place for the percent. So a decimal and three zeros will probably give you enough to do that. So this is our decimal, but this is not a percent yet. So we need to change it to a percent by moving our decimal two places to the right. You always move it twice to the right to turn a decimal into a percent. So our answer is 28%. So going from 25 to 32 is a 28% increase, okay? Which is about a quarter increase. 25% would be a quarter. So if we took a fourth of this and added it on, we'd get to about 32. Does that make sense? Okay. Questions on this one before we do an example of decrease? All right, so decrease. Go ahead and write this down as your first example. So if I start at 98 and I drop down to 64, I'm decreasing that number. So the formula is pretty similar, except it's the amount of decrease over the original amount. So I'm starting at 98. That's my original amount. And my amount of decrease, well, I need to figure out how much this went down. So again, we're going to subtract these. And we get 34. So here would be a good example of simplifying first. What can I divide 34 and 98 by? 2. Two. So if I, let me rewrite it down here. If I divide both of these by 2, I'm going to get an equivalent fraction, right? 1 half equals 2 fourths, but they both equal 50%. So it's the same thing. Uh, it's just going to make your numbers for dividing a little bit easier. So 34 divided by 2 is 17. And then 98 divided by 2 is 49. 
If you feel better about dividing by 98, then don't simplify. You'll get the same answer. So we need to put 17 inside the box. Numerator always goes inside. Denominator always goes outside. Make sure you're doing this with me. Start with the decimal and two zeros. That'll always get you started. Decimal straight up. And then how many times does 49 go into 170? How many times would 50 go into 170? Three times. So how many do you think 49, how many times does 49 go into 170? Three, three. Probably three times. So if I just, I'm going to use this 49 over here to multiply. Um, so we're going to get 7, 12, 13, 14, 147. Can we do another one? No. No. So we're going to put 3 up here. That's 147. Subtract. We get 23. Next zero, bring it down. How many times do we think uh, 49 goes into 230? Four. How many times would 50 go into 230? Four. 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 I'm going to go ahead and try four. And then let's take 49 times four over here. Or you could just add one more on to that. So 36, 16 plus 3 is 19. Do you think we could do another one? Yeah. You do? If we have 30 right here, and then four more left over before we get to 200, so we're going to have 34 left over, right? So I'm thinking that's about it there. 196, subtract, we get 34. So I'm going to go ahead and just do one more zero, because then it'll bring me to the tenths place when I turn it into a percent. So take one more zero, bring it down. How many times does, let's just go right off the bat, 50. How many times does 50 go into 340? Six. Okay, so let's try six. 49 times six is 54. And then 24 plus five is 29. Can we do one more? Yeah. We have 40 right here, and then six more right here. So we're going to have a remainder of what? 46. Okay, so what was that number? Six up here? So I'm just going to stop there. And I know we could probably do one more and it'll be rounded differently, but that's okay. So my decimal is 0 0.346. So you're going to take your decimal and move it two places to the right. And we get a percent decrease of 34.6%. So about a third. It went down about a third. If we take a third of 98 and subtract that from 98, we're going to get pretty close to 64 side find the percent decrease so I'll do one of each with you guys and then you guys can finish this page on your own so 45 to 60 uh, the numerator is how much did it go up what is your increase so how did we go what did we add to 45 to get 60 15 what's our original amount if I start at 45 and I go up to 60 what's our original amount 45 and guys, this would be a perfect example of make sure you simplify first because um, you probably won't have to do any division in this one. What can we divide both of these by? Three. Three, what else? Five, Five. what else? Fifteen. Fifteen. Divide them both by fifteen. And we get one-third, which you guys should have memorized by now if you don't actually divide then. But one-third is 0 0.3 repeating. Which if we move, and be careful on this, guys, when we move our decimal twice to the right, what am I going to fill this space in with? Three. A three. Oh. Very good. Because the three repeats. So fill it in with a three, which means we can put a three over here, which means I'll use my squigglies, which is about 33.3%. Okay? Also, guys, um, something that you should be a little bit familiar with is, if you have something like this, this is not an actual amount, but how do you write three repeating as a fraction? How do you write three repeating as a fraction? What is it equal? Right here. It equals one third as a fraction, right? So if this is really what my percent is, then the actual value is 33 and one third percent. Okay, don't worry about doing that on here. We'll do that later. Um, but this would be an actual value, and this is an approximate value. Okay? Uh, one more over here. Find the percent decrease. So I started 84, and I'm dropping down to 30. 
So 84 is my original amount. And then how much am I dropping by? 54. So again, let's go ahead and simplify. What can I divide both of those by? Two. Two, yeah, let's start there. Half of 54 is what? 27. Ooh, I was going to put 17. Yes, 27. And then half of 84? 42. 42. Can I simplify that anymore? No. By three. By three, good. Yeah. Divide those both by three. 27 divided by 3? 9. 9. 42 divided by 3? 3. 13. 13. Good. So now all we have is 9 divided by 13. So 9, I'm going to do decimal and two zeros, divided by 13. Decimal straight up. Just say it's four. It is 14, isn't it? There we go. Better? So how many times does 14 go into 90? How many times would 15 go into 90? Six times, so let's try 14 times six. And we get 24, and then six, seven, eight, so that's perfect. So that's six times, that's 84. Subtract, get six, bring down zero. Same thing, how many times would 15 go into 60? Four, so let's do 14 times four. And we get 16, so we have 56. So that's four times, so let's do one more zero. Ooh, 56, subtract, get four. How many times does 14 go into 40? Uh, three times. Four. Two. I'm going to say, let's try, let's see. Is it, how many times would 15 go into 40? Two. Twice, because three times is 45, so let's try two. 14 times two is 28. Can we add another one on here? Yeah. No. Yeah. Can we? No. 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 So it's just two? So what's our percent? 64.2%. Hey, so you guys go ahead and work on the rest of these on your own.